first of all, why English? I would like to explain that a little bit because, yes, I'm from Czech Republic, but uh, I would like to motivate Mike and Bruno in everywhere uh, to make more talks in English for more like a wider audience. And also I invited some and invited some uh, international audience, my colleagues who do not speak Czech language. So it's kind of important to use, you know, different language than Czech. Um, in a few minutes, I'm going to switch to share my screen and I'm going to show you two demos. Um, what I prepared is uh, I want to show you how to create an eShop in two minutes literally in two minutes so you're gonna have to pay a lot of attention to what i'm doing and because it's going to be very quick and later we are going to create a simple application in the react which is going to have a graphql api behind the scenes now the reason why i want to show these things on a less possible is because i remember myself when i was many years ago uh, i'm a big fan of meta and i was attending possible a lot and um i always like struggled with how to switch from php to something else because you see all these super awesome talks about how they are building these awesome applications but like how do you actually start right like uh so the targeted audience here is those are people who are in php community and they are looking a bit uh outside of the bubble so Hopefully, you can see my screen now. It would be nice if someone could confirm it. Um, but if not, I'm going to continue. Like, everything is OK. Um, you should see my my browser. Let me just quickly jump on the stream, because it seems like nobody's on the other side of the microphone. If I can see everything OK, yes. Great. OK, so, um, so how do you start with React, right? So you can go to a website and like, how do you build an application? And so if you're like, let's nice website, OK, let's get started. And you have a lot of text. So I already know that like, without reading it, you have to go to create a new React app and you need to learn how. And there's a lot of, lot of text. And like at the end, it, may be, it might be reminding you like how, for example, that the documentation is structured. Like it's not really about like how you are going to start the new application. It's about like the framework. It's about how it works. So, but at the end, like you're going to get into some um, recommendations, recommended two chains. One of them is Next.js. So I'm going to be using Next.js. So you can see that the React documentation is actually like sending you somewhere else. Uh, it's not really um, helping you to build the application. Or it is, but it's not like the way you would normally build it. So you can go to a Next.js application, a Next.js website, and here's like kind of the same story. Like it's a framework, right? It's it's they are not showing you how to build like a um, super nice application. They are showing you how to use the framework. So it immediately jumps into like what is React and your routing, data fetching, and you just go through a lot of things. Uh, it's kind of overwhelming. What I would recommend to the guys who want to uh, start with React applications quickly uh, without any previous knowledge is to go directly to bestsell.com, which is um, which is an say, application from the same company that is building Next.js. And you saw it at the, uh, at the beginning of Possible. I think uh, Milan was already talking about Vercel. He was playing there with uh, PHP. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this platform to build uh, these two applications. First of all, I'm going to build the eShop. And now please pay close attention to what I'm doing, because it's going to be amazingly quick. And it's really mind blowing how easy it is to start with, uh, with React with Next.js on a Versal platform. And that's exactly why I want to show it, because I wish I knew this, or I wish it existed when I was started. So you create a new project. Uh, notice that I'm not starting with the code. I'm going to get to the code, but I'm going to start with the Versal platform. And here, I have an option to select some templates. So let's go for Next.js commerce. commerce. And um, 
I can choose. So, so what this does is it's going to create a new repository on GitHub. And so let's give it some name, like Sobota test one, because we are going to have second one. I'm going to make it public so everyone can see it. Um, so this is already happening. So let's go to GitHub. I'm going to check my repositories. I mean, in my case, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit faster because everything, uh, like everything I'm showing you, I'm already part of. Like, I didn't go through the registration, right? I'm already part of the platform, so it's slightly faster. But at the end, it is the same process. So here's my repository already done. Like, notice I did not create it. Like, it's created by the Versal platform, right? Because it's already connected. So now, second step, which is only for this Next.js commerce. Uh, demo is that you can connect um, some integrations, specifically the native natively support uh, Shopify and BigQuest. And as you saw in the previous talk, it's a very trendy nowadays to have like a headless background. So, for example, BigCommerce is a headless e-commerce. So you can connect it. I'm not gonna do it because both of them are paid. However. The commerce I'm gonna start supports many providers. So at the end, you can co connect other providers and it's gonna work just as well. So I'm gonna skip it, um, but like the result is gonna be kind of similar. And what happens now is, so Versa created the repository on GitHub, right? And it's already connected to Verso. It knows what's going on and it's listening to, uh, so for example, when you push their new commit, it's gonna be automatically deployed without doing anything really like you cannot you, you don't have to go outside of the command line outside of your normal workflow and from my experience this takes for the simple project approximate approximately like half a minute so we are gonna wait a little bit um, in any case I can already like I can already clone it right I can already start it locally and it's gonna work but I'm not going to do it with this project. We are going to wait the, I don't know, one minute or whatever. And what I want to do is I want to show you um, that not only the repository is already created and I can start working with it locally, start making changes, but it's going to be deployed on a virtual infrastructure and you're going to be able to immediately open the link and you're going to be able to test it yourself. And this is exactly what I find incredibly mind blowing because this is really not how it works with other, I don't know, let's go like back to PHP, right? It's not really how it works in PHP world or at least it didn't work like this when I was doing, uh, when I was working with it a lot. Uh, but nowadays it's just incredibly easy. So we are done. And here we go. I can open this website. And if you want to try it yourself, and I recommend you to try it just to see how how quickly it was, you can go to possibota uh, test onevercelapp And you're gonna see the same eShop. And so here's a disclaimer maybe. Like the eShop is now kind of like mocked eShop. It doesn't it's not connected to any platform, right? It's not connected, for example, to the headless big commerce. However, it's fully functional. And if you would uh, connect the Shopify API, it would work including the orders. Um, so I actually think, uh, there's some demo. I didn't prepare it well, so I cannot show you the fully functional issue. But yeah, we have an issue then. Let's go to another project. So again, on my, on my, Ah, what can, what I can do is I'm gonna copy this link and I'm gonna put it here so everyone can test it themselves if you want. It's on my on my GitHub uh, under Possible Test One. So I'm gonna go back to the Verso platform. We have an issue. Let's do the React application with GraphQL server. Now the reason why I want to do it separately is because I know that this uh, commerce platform can be a bit overwhelming and there's really a lot going on. Um, but there is a template which is much easier to use. 
So let's start it. It's going to be another repository, also got a test too. Uh, the same thing happens, right? It's going to create a repository. Now it's empty, but it's going to be here soon. In the meantime, I can already clone it. Um, like I'm going to go as fast as I can while talking with you. And it's really not important what's going on there. What is important is what's going on. And that should hopefully help some, um, especially newcomers, I guess, to to try these new ways of developing software, uh, especially using React as, as it being a target audience. Anyway, let's open the repository. I'm going to find it somewhere. Somewhere in work. Here I have possible the test too. I trust this project in a new window. And here we go. I have an application. Uh, I already installed dependencies and I'm going to start it. So I already have a locally running uh, React application. Right. Here we go. I'm just going to open uh, developer console so everyone can see it. What's going on behind the scenes? It's going to be useful, useful in a moment. In the meantime, I believe this is going to be deployed again super quickly. Uh, when you are redeploying it, it just takes like half a minute. Uh, the first, like a cold start, it takes a bit longer. But I'm going to use this time to start building the application. So in Next.js, it's just like it cannot be easier, really. Basically, you need to take into account two files, which is index.js, which is under the pages. And we are going to take into account the hello.js, which is under pages slash API. Uh, now, so Next.js has a file system based routing, which is kind of shit, but it's super good for like starting quickly. And uh, this is exactly our case. Let me just start. You just configure super quickly right here. And here we go. Hopefully. Yeah. So the way it works, right, is that the file that is under pages.js is a React, a React application or React component. You can already start writing here a React code. And like it's super ready. So server-side rendering is working well, well basically everything you would need from a, from an application in any language really is already good to go and you can just start writing the application now the second file which is under pages api hello the j lives a bit separately and it has an it lives under api the hello right and it returns you json you know, as i already have here some json response and like the point here is that once you deploy it to a virtual platform, um, like the application itself, the React application is going to deploy independently, and then these API, uh, NPA functions are going to deploy a bit differently. And for the simplicity, it's going to basically work like Lambdas. You know, you can like call it via uh, some fetch, and it's going to work. So I'm going to show you exactly what does it mean. Um, so there are multiple ways how to fetch data in in uh, re, uh, in React in general, right? And Next.js especially. I'm gonna use the worst one just because it's the simplest to understand. And in reality, you would not use it like this. But as I said, like the point really is not uh, point of this talk is not how to write like good React applications. We are gonna get to this on some other possibility, but. The point is to show like how super simple is it to start with with uh, with React in general. So I know that I'm gonna need I'm gonna need <laughs> I'm gonna need to work with state effect. Just really go with me and kind of ignore it, what I'm doing. Um, not gonna be explaining it. I want to show you how we are going to get something working super quickly in production. Um, so we are going to use some state. 
the data. Okay, so here we are going to be keeping our data, which are going to be flowing from the API. And um, in an effect, we are going to fetch it. It's a super horrible way how to do it, honestly. Um, but I don't care. It's not important. So as I said, under API dot hello, we should get the JSON response. So we are going to be fetching this. Right. Uh, I'm going to get myself ready for the future. So I'm already going to use post for fetching it, which is just super weird in this context, but it's going to work. doesn't matter. Like it's get, it's post, like the server, how it's written now, the function, it really doesn't care. Um, So when you get the response, right, what do you do? You get JSON. When you get the JSON, which is in our case, basically like the data we need, well, then we can just set them. And what I like to do when I'm developing things is because I'm going insane with this always, so just stringify now. Uh, yeah, let's go. So I'm going to explain you in a bit what I just did. Um, so what's going on here, right? I have a React application, which is rendering with like server-side rendering and everything. But once it renders, I'm going to trigger, um, I'm going to trigger this request to API. And you can see it in the network. And you probably cannot see it very well on your display, but just trust me. There is my response from a, from an API. Here is my John Doe, and here is my API response. So what it did, it just contacted the API, and it got the request back. It got the response, and it renders the response. Here we go. Now, so how do you how do you, how do you make a GraphQL server on the next JS? Because this is kind of a REST API, super simple. And if you know me from my previous talks, you know that I'm super lazy and I like to take shortcuts. And one shortcut is that we are going to go to graphql.org, which is like an official website of GraphQL. There you can find a graphql.js. There is a various servers and it's, uh, it can also be overwhelming. But, but just go with the thing to start with. Uh, they just give you here the code, like how does it work, right? So you, have, you need to have a schema, GraphQL schema. You need to define how the GraphQL looks like. Then you need to define the resolvers. So you need to define what's happening when you call the particular feed fields on the GraphQL schema. Uh, and then you have like the GraphQL function, which hides parsing, validation, all the things, all the machinery of GraphQL. So I'm just gonna copy paste it here. And like, um, again, not like you would do it like this, but I can clean it a little bit if you want. Uh, import from GraphQL, we put it up here. Yeah, we are in a modern JavaScript, so we are not going to be using vars. And well, anyway, so once I send a request to a server, um, so the way how GraphQL works, right? So you need to send some string, some GraphQL string. I'm gonna do something super horrible, but bear with me. And this should also kind of open your eyes because like a lot of people are just getting focused on how it should be done. And like how like, just a weird, weird things to focus on. Like a GraphQL is super simple. Like it doesn't define define any, any way how to communicate with server or anything. You can do whatever the fuck you want. So I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna send there the server. I'm going to send there the hello with, you know, this is a valid GraphQL uh, query. It's just like normally we write something like query, here's some name and whatever. Um, so they're necessary, just query hello. And the server is going to receive it. I'm not like notice even like sending it as JSON or anything. Like it doesn't really matter. Um, here's my query, which it was hard coded. I'm going to take it from a request. And yeah, once I get the response from the GraphQL, because the GraphQL, the GraphQL function is gonna receive this, this string, right? I, I said from a client, it's gonna parse it, it's gonna validate it, it's gonna execute it, and it's gonna receive like the response from the resolvers and yada, yada, yada. Well, anyway, what I do is 
I'm just gonna send it back like the same way how it was here. Um, so yeah, let's try it. I don't know if it's gonna work. It's gonna be great. Let's see. Uh, it's not working. Cool. <laughs> uh, ah, yeah, that's very important. Like when you want to do some dependency, you need to install it first. It's going to be also quick. GraphQL. So GraphQL dependency is um, official like um, reference implementation. So the way how the authors of GraphQL envision GraphQL is basically implemented in GraphQL JS. I'm not saying that uh, you would use it in production, probably. Uh, I'm not, but you can. What's happening? Right. Mm, it is unclear to me what's happening. And that's why I love this, um, these online demos, these live demos, because it puts you under pressure and it shows you the reality. Okay, I'm not sure this is really the reason, to be honest. I don't think so. Uh, it's kind of weird. But whatever. If Perhaps I'm doing something super obvious and you already see it. No, it works. Uh, it's just some glitch. Who knows where? So here we go. I have an application. I hope you didn't get lost yet. I'm going to go through it again quickly. I have my React application which is rendering something and it's rendering it uh, on a client now. It's it's not gonna be working like a server-side rendering, uh, at least not yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to show you how to do it. But basically the client in React is calling a GraphQL API and it's being a response and the response is being printed as a, as a JSON. You know what we could do is we could like start implementing like some Possible the website. Let's go for it. Super quickly. Uh, title of our talk is going to be string, and our query hello is going to be returning list of talks. And so if it's a list of talks, we are going to need to be returning like ID one, and title of our talk is going to be uh, whatever. Now, Anza is going to see it. And he's gonna be like, oh yeah, let's go to implement Possibota in React. Oh, I don't think so, but it's not the point. Error. Oh yeah, this is great. Okay, so now the client is asking for hello, right? Asking for what does it want? Uh, it's always a horrible, horrible way to name this, but uh, it's like, this is like our talks and we need to fetch like ID and how did I name it, title. So now when I refresh it, I have here my talks and just like the last step is just to go through it. Um, so GraphQL is doing this this unfortunate thing. I mean, it's it makes a lot of sense, but it gives you like a data. Uh, so we need to extract it a bit better. Bear with me. I'm just gonna get it like this, which is gonna save me a lot of troubles. So now I have here my hello, which is in data. So let's go through. Look, unordered list data, hello, we are going to map it, it's a talk, we are going to return a list item, talk title, I guess, and the React requires key, which is absolutely irrelevant at this point, but <laughs> I did something wrong. I was there before? Mm. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's, you get the point. Like to start with React application, um, it, oh, it works. Okay, so I didn't make any mistake or I did. Again, like I guess probably is. Um, uh, 
No, just like if you're listening to me, and especially like the organizers of also what I have no idea what's happening because I have zero feedback and I'm not even sure if I have still time or not. So tell me this. Ah, I know what's happening. Um so how do I do with this? Um Yeah, that's just uh, like a React thing. Don't worry about it. What I'm going to do now, though, is we have the deployed application, right? And the deployed application has a has a URL. So I can open it here. You are going to see here still the demo. And we can go to the API hello. Now, to save myself some troubles, I used here the localhost API. I'm going to change it a little bit. So if we are running in production, we are gonna use the production API. And if I'm not, then I'm gonna be using this local one. I do certain things which I really this looks weird. Uh, those are things which are really like you can do them but however you want in reality, right? And not what I want to show here, but let's go. We are almost done here. I'm just gonna push it. So what's gonna happen now is I push it into my repository. You are gonna see here uh, another commit, maybe. Let's go. Yeah, so what happens now is that Versal platform registers that there is a new commit. And actually, there was it was a building here already some pull request because this dependency has some security issue now. So it's dependent on what is spreading pull requests everywhere. But yeah, Versal is starting deploying it. And this should be like really quick. So when we go back to our online application, um, which was possible to dash test number two verse it be so i'm gonna oh it's already here at the website okay so as you can see it already worked we have an application in production and by the way like you could totally be using like this versal platform for like some production application so like maybe you are thinking oh this is like a toy this is for testing like yeah whatever but like it's not like you can totally be running their big applications. You're probably going to pay for it. It's also quite a, some interesting number. But here we go. You don't need to take care of any server. It's totally from your perspective serverless. You have their API, which is running on the road API. Hello. It's responding with the GraphQL, GraphQL responses. In this case, obviously, it's not because I already have their GraphQL API. Um, but yeah, that's it. Pretty much, I hope this opened um or this showed how how to start with react super simple how to build your first super simple graphql server you can check it on my profile you can modify it you can start building from it and it also showed you how to run everything serverless basically without any cost at this moment and that's it thank you for listening Is there some organizer? <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. We are here. We just need to turn on Mike. Yeah, sure, no problem. So Mike is here and there is a question in in Czech language. Uh, do you want to return back to PHP and why? <laughs> if, if I want to. Yeah, no, if, if you want to, to. Like, I... like it's a hypothetical question, of course. Right, right. So I wanted to start with this the talk, but I was not sure if I'm going to have a lot of time. I wanted to say I love Nete. Like, Nete is a huge inspiration for me, and it's been 
greatly influential. And I'm still going back to net documentation, to be honest, and I'm taking a lot of inspiration from it. I do also like what's happening around PHP, especially around types. Um, I'm not a big fan of, as far as I understand, it's not really still compile time. Um, since I'm, I moved to Rust, which is having like an insane type system and everything is compile time and it's just ridiculously awesome, then the answer is no. But it's not because PHP or Neta is bad. It's because I'm a fan of different things now and I believe those things are better for my use case. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I also like the the way PHP is developing right now, and it's I I think like in my priority list, it's getting better. It's getting the right direction right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do not have any any more questions online. Do we have any question here offline? No. Okay. So uh, that's all for now, and next presentation will be